Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I recently did an article entitled Five Things That Women Do Wrong in Picking Their First Carry Gun. Now, I wanna to touch base on this article a little bit because some people kinda of got upset about some things that I said in here and sometimes you gotta realize when you're writing like a th you know two or three page article, it's hard for you to get out enough dialogue to actually explain the position well. So you know, usually these are things that you set out so that people can read them when they're drinking their morning coffee. So let's talk about five things that people in general, not just women, but people in general do wrong when they, um, when they pick their carry gun. Now, I'm gonna preface this a little bit, say this is gonna tagline off of this article. I'll post the article in the comments down below or in the, uh, in the description. But the other thing that I want you to realize is that this article was really geared more towards women and towards some kind of common faux pas that we see here on the range. So um, take that for what it's worth. All right, so number one on here, how does it feel, right? So people come all the time. I see this at the gun store counters and they say, how does it feel? How does a gun feel? Um, and I see, hear people say, I, I don't like the way that it feels or it doesn't feel right in my hands, whatever it is. Stop it. That Nobody said that you get to decide the carry gun based on how it feels. Lots of guns might feel good that are pieces of shit. So um, the, the simple fact is, is that you really need to let go of this idea of how does it feel. And the other thing is, is that what I see all the time is that I see a, women go to kind of the gun store counter and their husband, boyfriend, son, whatever. Somebody is with them, dad. Somebody is with them that is kind of a, you know the man in their life that uh, maybe knows a little bit about firearms. And that's what they'll say. They'll give them the gun and they'll say, how does it feel to you, babe? Or whatever, you're right? This is, this is stupid, right? This is really, really dumb advice because what is she gonna say? Well, first off, she's gonna say, oh, it feels great or I don't like it, right? Those are basically her two options. More times than not, they kind of come to this peer pressure. Oh yeah, it feels nice. Oh, I like that, whatever. Cause I don't know what else to say, right? And so they don't even know what they're looking for in a trigger. And so when you're, and, and so this applies a lot to women, but it applies a lot to first time shooters too. Just a lot of those that we deal with are women. So it's not a sexist thing. It's just, that, that's just what we end up seeing is a lot of women tend to have a lot less experience than the men do. Um, just, just not necessarily good experience either. But the simple fact is, is that how does it feel is a stupid question to ask a new shooter. They don't have any frame of reference. That's like giving a 16 year old a Ferrari and asking him how it feels behind the wheel. Well, of course it feels great. It's a $75,000 car, but if they have no frame of reference on how it feels in comparison to a Corvette, a Lamborghini, a, a, a Lotus Elise or whatever, all, you know, just nice sports cars, right? Um, I realize that there's some price difference in those, okay, so that's not what we're talking about. But the simple fact is they have no frame of reference to make a determination. So why would you ask them, how does it feel? It doesn't make any sense. It's the same thing when it comes to firearms. It makes no sense to ask somebody that has no frame of reference how it feels. It's also an irrelevant point on how it feels because how it feels can be trained. I, there, there are videos of six-year-old girls shooting Glocks just fine, okay? Then people used to hate Glocks because they had a thick grip and now that's become kind of a thing, right? Um, the simple fact is, is that how it feels is an irrelevant moot point because a, a bad feeling gun can be trained to feel normal and natural. Okay, if you have no frame of reference and no relevance to what you're comparing it to, then how it feels is, is again irrelevant. And it also has nothing to do with the quality of the firearm. Certain guns feel good that are not necessarily good and vice versa, okay? So a Glock does not necessarily feel that good in your hands, but it's a pretty solid firearm. Um, a, uh, so let me, let me give you an example. So the Staccatos, Staccatos, I haven't shot one yet. So just bear with me. If you're a Staccato guy, I was kind of salivating over these for a while. And I actually went down to a gun store that had some in and I went and I dry fired them a little bit and actually messed with them. And I was like, it actually doesn't feel that good. And maybe it's cause I'm used to kind of striker fire polymer frame pistols. Cause that's mostly what I shoot. But I was like, I really didn't care that much for them. So I'm still kind of salivating over them cause they're a sexy gun. And I think they, uh, uh, they're, they're nice looking anyways. And they're a nice firearm. So we'll, uh, we'll see if that ends up in the uh, in the inventory later on but I don't buy guns I don't carry I don't buy guns I don't shoot I don't buy guns I don't train with so um, unless I feel comfortable doing that with it I won't um, I won't I won't be getting one so bottom line is drop this stupid question of how it feels next and this applies to women okay specifically because what do the guys always say they say she doesn't need a semi-automatic she needs a five shot revolver okay this is the same stupid asinine advice that comes from the guy that has a shotgun by his front door that he leaves her when he heads out of town for a week and he racks one in the chamber as if she's gonna know A, how to operate the damn thing because it's a pump action shotgun with a safety that she's never been trained on, has no idea how to, how to, how to rack a new shell into it. And then the, the other factor that, you're, that you gotta figure out is she's five foot two and 110 pounds and this is a freaking 12 gauge shotgun that she's never fired before. Not that she can't handle 12 gauge, but she's little 
it's gonna it's gonna certainly distract her a little bit, right? It's gonna be a big freaking surprise um, when she's dealing with that at 2 a.m. So it's a talisman. This is this is psychological protection. It has no it, it provides no protection for that poor girl that, that you, you left alone in the house and uh, and didn't actually get adequate training. Rather than going out and buying a new gun, send her to a training class to learn how to use a semi-automatic pistol. Because I guarantee you, Amanda Lynn, my wife, she can drive a car, drive a stick shift, mind you, have a, eat a cheeseburger, put on makeup, operate all those little dials, and hit the blinker and everything, all these little buttons. She can do this all at the same time, okay? <laughs> so not necessarily the best advocate for her safety on the road, but uh, we've worked on that, okay? So the simple fact is that it, it's, it, it, women are fully capable of operating a semi-automatic gun. It is not that hard to slap a magazine in the bottom and pull the slide. If it makes you feel superior to say that, great, go forth and do whatever it is that you like to do, probably sitting in a beanbag chair eating Cheetos in your basement. But the simple fact is, is that there's nobody out there that is too stupid to operate a semi-automatic. They are just not that complicated of a machine. And certainly that sexist argument of women don't need that, it's stupid. Now, there is some advantage to revolvers, and the advantage to revolvers is for people that aren't going to spend time training. A snub nose revolver does have some benefit when you're not gonna spend time training. Now, I don't advocate for that. I don't advocate that people carry if they're not willing to spend time training, which is why I don't advocate that people carry some or revolvers or over semi-automatic pistols. But if somebody is not going to train and they're honest with themselves and knows that, hey, I'm probably not gonna go out, yeah, a snub nose revolver is probably the best thing for you because all you gotta do is pull the trigger and you got five shots and pull the trigger and you have somebody else load it for you that does know what they're doing, um, but, uh, but five shots, pull the trigger. That's, that's where those come into play is if you're too lazy to spend the time training. I don't work with those people a lot because I run a training school. So people that are coming out here are looking to get trained, okay? Um, and again, just because it's something that people can do doesn't mean that I think it's the best advice. I think you should get training and I think you should use a semi-automatic pistol, a modern fire, you know, striker fired or even hammer fired. Some of those are, are still adequate, but a modern firearm. Okay, so bottom line is she's not too stupid to use a semi-automatic and a anybody else that you're taking out training is not too stupid. Nobody needs that revolver. If you're giving that advice, you're just perpetuating the idea of people not getting training. Stop doing it, tell them to go get training and learn how to use a semi-automatic pistol. Okay, uh, the gun is too big or too small. This is one that comes up um, where people come to a class and they say, my boyfriend bought me this gun, my husband bought me this gun, my dad bought me this gun, whatever, right? Um, and not so much with guys, but we do run across it a little bit with guys. Let me explain. Guys have a tendency of picking guns that are too big to carry. Women have a tendency of picking guns that are too small to carry. And now we do have some women that, that do pick guns that are too big to carry. And it's because their dad bought them, you know, a Glock 19 or whatever. And they're never going to carry that because, again, she's 120 pounds. And uh, she's just this little itty bitty thing. And women dress more form fitting, it's harder for them to conceal weapons. It just, it's just a point of fact. They can change their wardrobe. The Getting most of them to do that is hard. Amanda Lynn does because she understands the value of caring. Uh, most women simply are not going to change their wardrobe. Uh, it's just what we've found through, through doing this and doing these training classes and stuff. We have just found that most women are unwilling to do that. And most men to a certain extent are unwilling to do that. People don't like to change the styles that they have because it makes them feel comfortable. So women tend to pick these little pocket revolvers or these pocket pistols, like the micro pistols, right? Pocket rockets, uh, something like um, uh, Ruger LCPs and stuff like that. And that's what they pick. And that's their, that's their defensive gun. Those guns are very difficult to operate. Chances are they've never done any training with it. So they don't know how to use it. So when I ask them to do it, they have to look at it for a second. And um, I think that's the safety, right? And they don't, they don't know the difference between the safety and the slide release. It happens all the time. So the simple fact is, is that they really need to spend some time uh, learning how to use this gun, but get a full size pistol. Um, not, not, I'm not saying like a duty gun, uh, but something like this is this you know, Shadow Systems, the CR920, something like a Glock 43X, uh, the Smith & Wesson Shields. There are full size pistols that allow you to get a full grip on your gun and actually be able to rack slides. Uh, this is similar size to what a mandolin carries every day. Um, there are options out there for you. So just 
keep that in mind that you don't need to use something like a Ruger LCP. Those are a poor choice for self-defense. I'm not a fan of pocket rockets. Yeah, they're great if you want to throw it around an ankle gun as a backup gun, but it is not an adequate uh, primary self-defense gun. And I don't see a lot of reason having a backup gun that is a gun that I would not want to use in a gunfight. You would feel undergunned using a Ruger LCP in a gunfight. It's just a point of fact. Um, so they are not they are not a quality built adequate firearm for self-defense. Okay, guys, you have the other other problem. Guys have a tendency of going and buying something like a Glock 17 or Glock 34 uh, or even a Glock 19 if they're not if they're not real uh, gung ho about carrying, and they leave it in their glove box or they leave it at home or in their office drawer or whatever. And so, it, 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 again, it's just a talisman. It doesn't do you any good if it's not on you. You're much better off carrying a small size pistol like this as opposed to a Glock 19 that you don't carry, right? Or a Glock 17 or a Glock 34. It can be the nicest gun in the world. If you're not going to carry it, it doesn't do you any good. You can buy your staccato full-size pistol so it looks good and you're safe and you can impress your friends with your $3,500 gun. But the simple fact is, is that you're not, you're not, you're not using it and it's not actually doing you any good. It's a talisman at that point in time to ward off evil spirits. Um, I was having this conversation with my tattoo artist the other day. He's a big time long distance shooter, and we were talking about that. You go see his long distance gun, and that thing, I mean, it co cosmetically is worn out. Mechanically, it's solid. He, repl you know, it, the, the, everything is, is, is bored and fitted, and uh, he can go over all the fancy stuff he does to it. You know, it's a $5,000 gun, and that gun actually stays in his car. You know, he goes everywhere with it. But that's, that's dedication to a guy that is a long distance shooter. And he puts thousands of rounds a year long distance doing, doing practice and doing competitions. And this is, this is substan substantially different than the guy that you see that goes out and buys a three, four, five thousand dollar AR or whatever gun, you know, whatever rifle they want and doesn't actually use it. It doesn't get any trigger time. All they ever do is use it to show their friends. Look at this nice gun. And then what do they do? They hand it to their friends and he says, oh, it feels nice, right? Because what the hell else are you going to say? It's a freaking gun. Um, you know, they, they yeah, that, that's, it's a gun. Like it's not, it's not, there's not that much variance between guns. They have handles, they have triggers. Like, you know what I mean? Like from the fit of your hand. So uh, get rid of this idea of guns uh, of too small, too big. Use what you're actually going to carry and look at guns that are practical. Um, if you need help picking a gun, come to our Pistol Zero classes. Those are great ones. Most of those are for women. If you would like to do a men's one, just shoot us an email at info at TimberlineSolutionsAL.com. Uh, we'd be happy to get a, a men's class or, or an open class, you know, open sex class for you. But we do a women's class once a month, and so that they just tend to be more common. The guys always want to go take Pistol One. So... Um, but if you need some help picking out a gun, that's the one to take. Okay, number four, poor choice in caliber. Okay, so we see this a lot. It used to be, right, the big ones were 9mm, 40, 45. Okay, now 40's kind of dropped off, so we've got 9mm, 45 left. Now, there are the, the oddball calibers out there, 357 Sig, 357 Magnum, 38 Special, uh, and these aren't, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Wildcats. Wildcats are different. Wildcats are kind of a homemade rounds and stuff like that, not to be used in self-defense. I'm talking about oddball calibers in that we don't generally see them used in self-defense guns, but there's some people that like them. There's a very small percentage of people that like 40 still, that like 357 SIG. Um, and don't get me wrong, 357 SIG has some, some, some outstanding ballistics, so I'm not, I'm not opposed to those, uh, but I do have some problems with them. And my problems generally are pistols, if you look at the statistics, about 33% of pistol shots will actually end up being fatal. The vast majority of them are just not fatal. So we're talking about in incapacitation versus lethality. The incapacitation effects of a pistol round are pretty identical across the board. There's not a lot of variance in them. And so, and in some cases, actually nine millimeter has shown to be higher than others, including 45, because modern ballistics actually tend to stop it. And so it exerts all its energy inside of a body cavity before it exits. Okay, so this is obviously not using full metal jacket, but quality self-defense rounds. Now, if you're using full metal jacket, that's a whole different discussion because full metal jacket, that's a military thing. Those are military rounds, uh, training rounds. We don't need to be using full metal jacket in self-defense. They just don't make a lot of sense. Um, but uh, but hollow, or, uh, um, any type of quality self-defense rounds, something like critical duty, critical defense, a uh, bunch of other ones out there. Um, quality self-defense rounds are something that you want to look at. I like nine millimeter because nine millimeter is affordable for training ammunition, right? Your full metal jacket and nine millimeter 
Uh, it carries a lot of ammo in a magazine and it's, it's uh, relatively easy to carry a spare magazine on you and have you know, 30, 40 rounds in two magazines. It's really difficult to do that with a, uh, with a 45, uh, with anything other than like a Glock 21, which is a full size 45 uh, that holds 14 plus one, um, if I remember right. Uh, anyways, so there are some there are some problems with these uh, with forty fives in that extent. But as a general rule, anymore the forty five and nine millimeter are kind of the accepted self defense rounds. With everything else being used more for animal defense and stuff like that. Again, there's some people that still like those other calibers and that's fine. I'm not dogging your caliber. The simple fact is I can train more with a nine millimeter. I can put rounds down range faster and I can generally carry more uh, than you can do with any of the other rounds. Now that same would be true on the other spectrum of like 380 auto. 380 auto would uh, be uh, in theory, right, faster than nine, if it was in a full size pistol, faster than nine millimeter, carry more rounds, et cetera, because it's small, well, actually it wouldn't carry more rounds because it's the same diameter, but, uh, but it could be in a smaller pistol. The problem with 380 auto that we run into is that 380 auto uh, does not generally have the power that it doesn't create the incapacitation effects that something like a nine millimeter does. This is why we use nine millimeter. Nine millimeter creates a pretty good size uh, temporary body cavity as well as a good permanent body cavity, meaning it has great uh, terminal ballistics. And those terminal ballistics are what create the, 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 uh, the, the kind of desired effect in self-defense. A couple caveats on that with 45. 45 is a subsonic round, so if you're going to shoot suppressed, 45 tends to be a little bit better, right? It's like 5.56 versus 300 blackout. 45 is a little bit better if you want to use the subsonic rounds and you want to do anything um, that's subsonic. The other reason I like 45 is if you're talking about being out in the woods and stuff like that, 45 has a little bit more ass behind it. Although, again, generally, if I was going to be using like bear protection or something like that, I'd rather have a 10 millimeter. Uh, that's a discussion for a different day. Nine millimeter 45 is what you should be sticking with for self-defense calibers. And I like nine millimeter the best. And I think as a general rule, most tacticians have gone to the point to where they like nine millimeter. Look at Shadow Systems pistols. They only make nine millimeter. They don't make anything else. Okay, number five. I know this was a little bit long video, but number five, not getting training and not training. Okay. This is it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with revolvers, guys that get these little snub nose revolvers and they don't do any training. This is a problem. Now it's a problem legally at the end of the day because legally uh, that can be used against you in court if you have to do self-defense uh, or, or if you do have to do a self-defense shooting, particularly if you were to uh, do something that maybe was borderline, um, not necessarily unethical, but you can't claim that this is what I was trained to do, right? If you haven't ever received training. So our recommendation, that fits most people's budget. Now, if you're real extreme like me and you like doing the training classes, go to as many as you can. I go to as many as I can. Um, I've got several this year, um, like three or four this year that I'll be doing. Um, and you guys, you can do, there's training classes online that are real cheap that are, that are still beneficial training. So don't discount those. 60 bucks, you can go get some trainings online. We're actually getting ready to offer some online courses here on our website that you'll be able to sign up for and pay a monthly subscription. And you'll have full access to new articles and new training videos and all that stuff as we get uh, get get a little bit further down this game. So, um, and gets actually got to, I got to get content inventory built up before I can launch it. So that's taking some time. Um, but I've got like three hour lecture courses on there, stuff like that on personal protection, home security, that sort of thing. So um, anyways, I want to make sure that y'all understand that, that training is super important. Now, for most people, one class a year, and I want you to go to the range once a month. If you'll do those two things, one class a year, and go to the range and actually practice once a month. I don't mean take your 22 and go shoot tin cans and beer cans and stuff like that. Go to the range and practice your, your, your tactical fundamentals once a month and set up, set up, hey, we're going to do it the first Saturday of every month. We're going to go knock this out. That way it doesn't get forgotten about and you do one professional training class a year. You can take them from the same trainer, you can take them from different trainers, I don't care as long as you're doing one professional training class a year. There's about 70% of firearms training is across the board, all professionals agree. There's that 30% that you change a little bit uh, between different schools and that's where you get the variance in schools and the way that they teach. So get a little bit from everybody, but you can really learn a lot from one guy and then pick up a lot of other stuff from like the other guy's YouTube channels and stuff like that. So you don't necessarily have to get out, but one training class a year and it doesn't all have to be on pistol. We're just working on fundamentals. So we're working on those tactical fundamentals and everything. So you can do rifles, you can do shotguns, you can do pistols. Um, we're learning tactics and we're learning to become a, a tactician in self-defense. Okay. So 
The other thing to look at with your training is you can look at seminars and stuff like that. We give them around Birmingham all the time where we talk about home security. We're talking about personal protection while you're outside of the house. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, conceal and carry fundamentals. We have like a three hour lecture portion that, that just goes over conceal and carry fundamentals specifically for newer people that are newer to carrying. So guys, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all go because we're already at like 20 minutes. Um, I really appreciate y'all watching. Make sure and like and subscribe to the, uh, to the channel, like the video and subscribe to the channel. <clears throat> Hit the bell and uh, check us out on Facebook. Facebook. I will have a link to this article down in the description. Really appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch y'all next time.